AM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adai Tano Program. All new 2018 Kona by Hyundai, available at Cars Plus. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Timuni and Dededo. Always open, always local. Straight ahead on primetime, weather officials caution the community of the haze in the air. It's a direct result of the volcanic activity on the big island of Hawaii. Plus, new developments in the case involving dozens of luxury cars that were fraudulently registered here on Guam before they were shipped to China. And also tonight, a motorcycle rider who crashed his bike over Memorial Day weekend has been identified. Half a day, everybody, and good evening. I'm Jason Salas. These are tonight's top stories. And we begin with developing news out of the Aloha State as Hawaii County civil defense officials report the fast-moving lava flow from Kilauea destroyed 10 additional homes over the weekend and it's threatening more properties. More than eight structures are gone and upwards of 200 people are forced to live in shelters. The volcanic activity affecting our Pacific neighbors is now having an impact on us locally as scores of Guamanians took to social media posting about the noticeable haze in the air that appears to have started around Sunday. The NWS today confirmed the rather foggy substance is in fact volcanic haze from the Kilauea eruption. Nick Delgado has the story. Skies won't be as clear this week. The result of the haze from Kilauea traveling more than 6,000 miles in our direction. Of course, that does uh, pose a lot of potential health risks, especially for like people like myself, with, like asthma and young children, elderly. Darius Kitigua, who has had asthma all his life, is no doubt concerned. So hopefully we don't get sick. And others stunned. What are your thoughts? Wow. In a way, I can't really describe how I feel, but like, that's crazy for it to reach here. It's mother nature, you know, and you cannot really control that. Guam Homeland Security and the National Weather Service issuing a notice Tuesday morning. The volcanic haze from Mount Kilauea uh, will be across the Marianas for the next several days. But what is haze? It's a very small particulate matter and uh, is different from ash. Uh, closer to the Hawaiian Islands, uh, to the Big Island, uh, they're dealing with the volcanic ash. That has a, a bit of an impact on the aviation community. Weather officials are working with Guam EPA to monitor the air quality. The haze currently posing no serious threat for flights coming and going, but meteorologist Brandon Adlett says it will be noticeable across Guam and the CNMI. Mainly it's just going to be the visibility. Uh, so instead of our normal clear uh, tropical weather, uh, it's going to be a little bit milky uh, looking out there, kind of hazy. Uh, you may smell a little bit of a sulfuric uh, odor to the air at times, uh, but not very often. Mariners also advise that the haze could make it tougher to see the island from out at sea. Adelit says it's been more than a decade since the last time the territory experienced something similar. We've not really had haze uh, like this, probably not since 2005, Anatahan uh, erupted. And uh, there was a couple of uh, tropical cyclones in the region that uh, pushed the winds around to the north and brought that haze down into the Marianas. Meantime, for those with respiratory issues, officials say you could experience some difficulty breathing. Minimize your, uh, your time outside and stay inside where the air is air conditioned and you should be just fine. And check in with your doctor to make sure you and your family get through the week safely as the haze passes through. I think they would be shocked as well because some of my family work at family members, they work outside, and I hope that they're okay with the situation, and I think they're praying for the best as well. Just stay inside as much as I can and just wait for the haze to be gone, Then when it's gone, go back to the beach, do everything I was doing. For now, Adelaide says they predict the air to improve and the skies to clear up by the end of the week. He says the wind patterns could change and we're expected to get more rain this weekend to help clear it up. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahu Sinek Delgado. Also tonight, they're off the hook for now, at least for their case in federal court. As early Tuesday morning, Judge Joaquin Menabusin granted the government's motion for leave to dismiss the case against Prestige Automobiles Chief Executive John Shen and Sales Manager Orlando Domingo without prejudice. Now, this effectively means the case could be brought again at a later date, but unlikely, according to prosecution, who tells the court they want to focus on the more serious felony charges against the duo in the local courts instead. Crystal Paco joins us in studio with the latest. Crystal, what have you got? Jason, it's a case involving dozens of luxury cars that were fraudulently registered here in Guam before they were shipped to China. And while the government's already secured one conviction, they're backing out of the case they charged in the federal court against the remaining defendants. 
It's a move from the government and a surprising turn of events. In court on Tuesday, parties argued the government's motion for leave to dismiss the charges and counts against defendants Orlando Domingo and John Shen. If their names ring a bell, Domingo is the sales manager at Prestige Automobiles, Shen the chief executive. The duo worked with Anna Absalon, who sidelined as a tax preparer. Absalon, who's already pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor charge in federal court, used the personal information from tax returns to assist her co-defendants in a scheme to fraudulently register BMWs and Range Rovers, which were then shipped to China. In local court, Absalon also entered a deferred plea with the government. That means if she cooperates, she could have the case wiped clean from her record. While this is one secured conviction for the government, Chief Prosecutor Joseph McDonald argued they want the federal misdemeanor charges against Domingo and Shen dismissed without prejudice. Why? The government wants to focus on felony charges against Domingo and Shen in the Superior Court of Guam. That case is scheduled to go to trial later this year. McDonald also reports the Department of Revenue and Taxation continued to review the case and there could be more serious charges. He further argued that the government has received new evidence from defense and will need more time to untangle those facts. Defense attorney Louis Anza advised the court the only new evidence he provided were Domingo's sick leave forms. Those sick leave forms revealed Domingo was not at the place and time when the alleged crimes occurred. Yanza argued the case should instead be dismissed with prejudice. His supporting court filing stating, quote, the government should never have filed this case without properly investigating the matter, end quote. The court ultimately ruled in favor of the government. Trial in the Superior Court of Guam case is scheduled for October 2018. Jason, back to you. Hi, Crystal. Thanks so much for that report. In other news, while an autopsy is pending, family and friends on social media have identified the victim in Sunday's fatal motorcycle crash as 32-year-old Andrew Demian. Police say the biker was driving south when he lost control, ran off the roadway, and crashed into a ditch. He was transported to Naval Hospital in Agania Heights, where he was later pronounced dead. GPD is activated to investigate as an autopsy is scheduled for Wednesday afternoon. Jurors were deadlocked and a mistrial rendered. So what could be next for husband and wife Raymond Martinez and Juanita Moser? An order issued by Chief Judge Francis Tidian who Gatewood requires parties to report to federal court on Wednesday for a status hearing. Now that couple, as we noted, were tried for conspiracy and possession of methamphetamine hydrochloride with the intent to distribute. Tomorrow's hearing is at 11. Well, one man was checked into a hotel when he was busted with the drugs as 38-year-old Ray De Leon Guerrero was arrested and charged with possession of a controlled substance as a third-degree felony. Court documents state hotel management called police and allowed them to enter the room after the checkout time. That's where authorities discovered an improvised glass pipe with suspected meth and used syringes in the trash can and bathroom. When Guerrero returned to the room, he said he just arrived from Saipan and was planning his return. The items, court documents state, tested positive for methamphetamine. Staying with the crime beat, a 21-year-old man accused of multiple sexual assaults at a local sanctuary shelter faces new charges after a pair of minors reported him to police. Jay Nedadog has been charged with first-degree criminal sexual conduct and second-degree criminal sexual conduct. Court documents state the victims are only 9 and 10. The younger victim reported the abuse started when she was 7 as the defendant allegedly offered her chocolate and candy so she would stay mum. When the police said she would report him, he allegedly gave her more chocolate and said not to tell or she would be in trouble. The older victim also reported being digitally penetrated by the defendant in and out of his home. In other news, one man allegedly broke into a Talafofo home and then came back to later apologize for it. 16-year-old Jathan Chrysostomo was sitting on the driveway when police arrived. Now, court documents state that Chrysostomo was seen climbing out of the window of the kitchen and then running away. But before he escaped, he apparently dropped his phone in the house. He's been charged with burglary as a second-degree felony and criminal trespass as a misdemeanor. In other news, four cars with smashed windows or taillights and a fifth car with damage after being kicked in are reported. As court documents state, one of the victims reported being approached by three men while in his car. One of those suspects was identified as Tano Silo, who allegedly demanded to get inside the car. The driver refused, prompting Silo to kick the side of the vehicle. The driver sped off and feared the defendant would attack him, as another witness also reported seeing Silo holding a piece of wood and striking cars. He was arrested for attempted carjacking as a felony and five counts of criminal mischief also as a felony. 
Also tonight, a 44-year-old man is under arrest for allegedly stabbing another man in the chest. Brian Keller reportedly showed up to a Timuning establishment and demanding to talk to the owner. While waiting, Keller and his girlfriend got into an argument in their car, with a staffer approaching the couple, asking them to keep it down. That's when Keller allegedly slashed the staffer in the chest and proceeded to shove the victim. The victim suffered a three-inch laceration to the chest, with no serious injuries reported. Well, one man reportedly came home drunk and would not calm down, prompting his neighbors to call local police. 48-year-old Matthew McLaren was seen on the second floor holding a stick and mimicking karate moves when police arrived. A neighbor reported McLaren would not stop yelling at people in the parking lot for no reason. When confronted by police, he allegedly yelled several expletives, saying, quote, You, expletive, are afraid to arrest the drug dealers. Step away from my front door. I have eyes on you guys. Step away or I will, expletive, kill you. Upon arrest, he kicked one of the officers in the chest and continued to yell obscenities. McLaren was arrested and charged with assault on a police officer as a felony. Well, he allegedly threatened to threatened a woman with a knife and a machete as 28-year-old Luis Mendiola Camacho II is behind bars, charged with terrorizing as a third-degree felony and misdemeanor family violence. Court documents say the victim had locked herself in a bedroom in fear of the defendant who allegedly threatened to shove a knife down her throat. When police arrived, they observed cuts to the bedroom door consistent with the report of the victim. And also tonight, one woman allegedly threatened to stab a woman with a kitchen knife as 24-year-old Melissa Ludwig is behind bars charged with terrorizing as a felony and family violence as a misdemeanor. The victim reported that another member of the household was able to grab the knife away from Ludwig. When interviewed by police, she admitted to holding the knife but said she never intended to use it. Well, officers at the local prison found contraband during a perimeter check early Monday with findings including 10 ounces of chewing tobacco, two packs of cigarettes, and a lighter. The items were found outside the inner perimeter fence as officers were walking the area around 6 a.m. Monday. It's been turned over to GPD's Mandania Drug Task Force to investigate the matter. Well, these are just some of the stories what we are working on, but stay tuned. We'll tell you what else happened on Guam today. You're watching. There are more ways to experience KUAM news than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM news app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. A simple handshake. That's all Jake Calvo needed when he started his company. Today, 80 years later, we like to say thank you to all of you who have taken our hand in trust. Thank you to the dreamers. Thank you to the realists. Thank you to the family-oriented. Thank you to the entrepreneurial. Thank you to those climbing the corporate ladder. And to the ones starting a new life together. Thank you to the traditionalists and the edgy. To the young at heart and the old souls. Thank you to the daring, to the protective, to the practical. Thank you to the hopeful, to all of you from all of us, our deepest, happiest, and infinite thanks. 80 years here for you. 80 years thanks to you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. to 60 years of Pizza Hut, to original pan, to stuffed crust, and to the best of both. The new double cheesy crust pan pizza with stuffed crust cheese baked just inside the golden edge of original pan. Here for a limited time, no one out pizzas the hut. 
There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. Welcome back to Primetime, my friends. Land management and the CLTC is back before senators for their third oversight hearing. The discussion is over the latter agency's program's income and expenditures. Pika Farron, the commission chairperson, says they're working on a strategic plan to fix issues of the past and improve the way they carry out the initiative. The series of oversight hearings came after KUM uncovered a land scam with people jumping the line on the waiting list to get property. The hearing's underway at the Congress building. In business news, the gap from a projected $67 million government shortfall is closing thanks to the 1% increase in the business privilege tax. Six million more dollars was collected in the first month of the increase, according to the Department of Revenue and Taxation, with new federal tax policies forcing Gov Guam to scale back operations and raise taxes earlier this year. Now, raising the tax to a single percent was estimated to bring in $25 million through the next fiscal period. Come October, the tax will roll back to 4%, and island residents will feel the squeeze again with a 2% sales tax to account for the new federal tax policies. Part of funds from the sales tax will go to the hospital, which has been underfunded by as much as $30 million in the last four years, according to the Calvo administration. While there are talks of removing the sales tax, Governor Eddie Calvo says, quote, Without addressing the shortfall anticipated for next fiscal year or responding to the needs of the hospital or our public schools, removing that funding source would be irresponsible. From Capitol Hill, the U.S. House of Representatives passed the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2019. Now, as it's more officially known, H.R. 5515 authorizes nearly $640 billion for national defense programs and $69 billion more for overseas contingency. Notably, provisions sponsored by Delegate Madeleine Berdalia were approved by the House, among them a provision to hold the Navy and DOD to hold less land at the conclusion of the Marine realignment than had originally been planned, as well as a provision endorsing Guam's labor force through the H-2B visa program. The latter extends the exemption for all of Guam from the national H-2B visa caps until 2020, as well as enhancements for health care workers to be admitted under the H-2B visa initiative. For more, check out house.gov slash Bordalio. Back on Guam, the upcoming fiscal year will be another banner one for Guam's tourism industry, so says GVB President Nate DeKnight during their budget hearings before senators today. His agency made a request for more than $26 million for the upcoming fiscal year. And while Denied admits the current year has been challenging since the threat from North Korea, he does say that efforts have been made to keep tourists coming to the island. They also credit their annual events that continue to bring travelers to Guam even during off-peak seasons. Also noteworthy is Jeju Airlines announced services planned from Osaka, Japan to Guam, offering another great boost to the economy. Well, over the last couple of years, island residents and other news making their way in and out of Dededo, as well as people living around the entrance to Guam Regional Medical City, have dealt with the ongoing road construction in the quite busy thoroughfare. And now, Public Works and the village's mayor are hosting a community meeting tomorrow night to discuss the various improvements, lane expansions, and literal roadmap for the project. The initiative is fully funded by the DOD in preparation for the relocation of U.S. Marines and their families to what used to be Nick Dams, and projects man project managers will be on hand to answer your questions and concerns. If you'd like to participate, once again, it happens Wednesday night. You can check out the Estumbo Gymnasium from 6 to 8 p.m. or email info at guamtransportationprogram.com. Now, perhaps our most popular story on Facebook over the last two years has been the spam recall, as Public Health is offering more on that program that we told you over the weekend. So far, no local reports or injuries or illnesses have been reported, as Hormel recalled Spam Classic and Hormel Foods Black Luncheon Loaf products, with Best Buy dates of February 2021. The issue came after multiple reports to the company of metal objects found inside the cans. Public Health confirms more than 1,400 products in question have since been removed from store shelves and returned to their distributors. Consumers are also asked to refrain from using the products and return them to their places of purchase. Well, from GIGO tonight, our friends up at Anderson Air Force Base are preparing to welcome a new era of leadership as Brigadier General Gentry Boswell will assume command from Brigadier General Douglas Cox. The former will be arriving from a previous duty post at Barksdale Air Force Base in the state of Louisiana, during which he served as Deputy Director of Operations at Headquarters Air Force Global Strike Command. He begins his new assignment on Guam on June the 8th. 
We have some regional headlines for you now. Here's our friends at KSPN2 News in Saipan. Half a day, Guam. Here's what's making news in the CNMI. It's a day of remembrance and honor to everyone that have served in the military. Um, we're thankful and just grateful for everything that they've done for us, for our freedom. I served uh, one enlistment with the U.S. Army Infantry, and uh, I, I got deployed a couple of times uh, while I was in, and I uh, lost uh, one of my good friends who I went to basic training with. So a day like today, you know, when I was growing up, this was just a holiday, right? It was an extra day off of school or something, but it's, it's really special when, uh, you know, when you get older to know that we have a day set aside just for this. Watch these top stories and more at SaipanTV.com. For KSPN2, I'm Adriana Cotero. All right, fantastic work by our friends up north. Please stay tuned, everybody. Sports is coming up next. Supercell event. Enjoy huge savings on our most popular Samsung Galaxy smartphones. But this offer won't last long. So drop into a GTA store today.
Our mighty, mighty SUV mega sale is going on now at Cars Plus, and you're going to save big with cash back on every purchase. Get to Cars Plus and shop our great selection of Hyundai Santa Fe's, Tucson's, and the all-new Kona, Guam's most affordable SUV, or our full line of Jeeps, like a new Jeep Renegade, save six grand, or a new Jeep Cherokee, save 4,500 with rates as low as 1.99% APR for qualified buyers. It's Cars Plus, mighty, mighty SUV mega sale. Cars Plus, driven by you. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports, brought to you by Triple J, the UOG Tritons men's basketball team. Already starting the recruitment process. I have the info coming right up, but first off, some trench challenge news for you. Check it out. Trench Challenge, Guam's premier obstacle course race and only qualifier to the obstacle course race world championships kicked off the first of six training camp sessions at Urban Fitness in Timunin. Guam's newest ninja warrior, Darren Mowgli Perez, who was on island for a short time visiting family, hosted the introduction and fitness assessment. Uh, me going over uh, basic uh, fundamental like uh, PT tests, uh, fitness tests. Uh, we want to see where people are at, and then from there, we're going to break people down to groups, uh, the different fitness levels, and start uh, going over obstacles, techniques, um, you know, uh, like how, how to overcome physical obstacles. These training camps are designed to get participants ready for the 2018 Trench Challenge set for September 30th. Whether you're training for the elite division to qualify for the world championships or just having fun in the recreation division with family, friends, or co-workers, the coaches will prepare you for the obstacles on the course. The training camp clinic is free for those already registered for Trench Challenge 2018 by the end of this month or $50 for all six camps or $10 per camp. The training camp will include a weekly training plan, basic nutrition guide, and fitness assessment. BMI, body fat, hydration for each camp is sponsored by Powerade. For more information regarding the training camps, contact Urban Fitness at 686 Seven 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 nine, or email info at trenchevents.com. Relay for Life was another great event with the support from the community. Money raised from the teams that participated in fundraising efforts will go towards the fight against the deadly disease. Tonight we hear from some local athletes on why they support the event yearly. Because my uncle Bubbing passed away from passed away from cancer a few years ago. So that's why I support Relay for Life. I support Relay for Life because everybody's affected by this disease. It's nice to see the island get together and support everybody who knows somebody who's affected by cancer, lost somebody to cancer, or supporting somebody going through this disease. I support Relay for Life because my grandmother survived cancer. And my aunt survived cancer. I support Relay for Life because it really uh, it shows the strength of Guam as a community for fighting back this uh Really, uh, I guess, devastating would be the right word. Devastating condition that uh, a large uh, percentage of our population deals with. You know, it's a really good way of showing your support, even if uh, none of your family is, you know, affected by it. You know, Guam is one community. My grandma has cancer, and or she had cancer. She suffered from breast cancer. And me just jogging around, doing all of this, is nothing con compared to the fight she went through. And I just come out here, support her every day. Also, all these other people out here the people who lost their families and everything. I support Relay for Life because personally, I've been affected by cancer through my loved ones and people I know have also been personally affected. So any cause that's purpose is to defeat, is to defeat the, this disease is something that I'll support. The University of Guam men's basketball team has signed their first recruit for the 2018-2019 basketball season to a UOG letter of intent. Logan Hopkins of Floresville, Texas, will become a Triton for the fall 2018 season. The Triton basketball team went 30-0 in 2017, 2018 with three league championships. Logan is a 5'10 point guard who played high school basketball at Floresville High, where he was a first team all district selection as a senior and second team all district player as a junior. As a senior, he averaged 20 points per game and also played football and baseball. Well, that's going to do it for sports. We're back right after this. Let's welcome the first-time parents, the people with the dream to be their own boss. Let's welcome the things that inspire us, connect us. Let's welcome the college graduations, 
new beginnings, and happy ever afters. At Bank of Hawaii, we'd like to welcome you to all the new adventures, the next chapters, and all the great things you have to look forward to. Welcome to tomorrow. Bank of Hawaii. In this divided world, there are still things that unite us. Great music, thrilling games, and the love for that perfect burger. Ruby Tuesday Guam, for the love of burgers menu. For a limited time, get an amazing burger for just $11.99. Lunchtime at Ruby Tuesday Guam. Beat the increase at Triple J. Buy now before the sales tax starts. Zero down, 1.9% financing, and easy trade-in. Now is the time to buy. Get into a 2018 Mazda CX-5 at our lowest price yet. Only $19,995. Or our big boy truck, the Ford F-150, starting at $298 per paycheck or the north american car of the year the 2018 honda accord at only 206 per paycheck beat the increase and buy now at triple j visit us online at triple and get pre-approved instantly trade-ins welcome some conditions apply triple j auto group customers first we got some birthdays to do so here are the newest members of the cold stone creamery birthday club let's get ready to party island style for today's May 29th birthday babies. Happy birthday to John Anthony Jr. Santos. Happy 16th birthday, John Anthony. This comes from Dad. Marcus, a happy 5th birthday to you with lots of love from Mommy, Daddy, Brothers Kai and Matthias, Sister Ella, Great Grandma Lulang, and all the families. Happy birthday to Jonah Mindiola. Happy birthday to our 4.0 son, say Mom, Dad, and Isaiah. It is a very happy birthday to Jasia Padilla. Happy birthday and God bless our beautiful daughter. We love you with all our hearts. Say Daddy, Mommy, Jenica, Jaden, and Jericho. Happy fifth birthday to Loria and Kitachai. This comes from Mom, Dad, Tina, Dee, Kat, Kim, Manuel Ray, Aliyah, Lena, Avery, your entire friends, and your entire family. And happy birthday to twins today, Derek and